Hello, Leapers, and welcome back to the Quantum Leap Podcast. I'm Albie, and I'm so excited to have with us today, Jet Wilder. How are you doing, Jet? Hi, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's so awesome to have you on. This is a pretty good uh, episode, A Kind of Magic, Salem Witch Trials, but not in Salem, a little bit outside, right? And uh, there's townspeople. It's like an old West set. It seems pretty fun. I want to definitely talk about the the Quantum Leap episode you're in because that's why we're here. But I want to know more about you. Like uh, I I noticed I I went through your IMDb and uh, you've been a lot of cool stuff. It seems like you started out like a dancer. How did did you get started in uh, the business, entertainment business? Yeah, I did. I mean, I grew up doing all all three. Um, I'm from Minnesota originally, so um, grew up there. And they used to have like a really big commercial industry in Minnesota. So I did that when I was a kid, like I did the whole Cheerios box thing. Um, but then I, I lived there the whole time and moved out when I was I moved when I was 17 because I was a year ahead in high school, um, moved out to L.A. And then dance just kind of came first i it i sh- went to the um an open call for a dance agency and got signed and then teen beach movie was like my third or fourth audition out in los angeles so it was just very fortunate series series of events so auditioned for that and booked that as a dancer yeah so then went off to puerto rico for a couple months not a bad first job welcome mm-hmm. to los angeles yeah <laughs> yeah. Not bad working for Disney right away. I mean, oh, that yeah. doesn't happen often, probably. Oh, it was amazing. It seems like a cool uh, concept for a, a film or a TV show. You could like, uh, I think uh, people borrowed that in the future, like uh, what uh, Smegadoon, Chicago. Oh, yeah. seen those where, I haven't know. seen Schmigadoon. I've, so. I've worked with Dove before and I know she was in that, um, but mm-hmm. I, haven't, I haven't watched Yeah, she's good in that. Oh, she's good in everything. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah. She's great in everything um so what was that like uh any any pressure that being your first thing oh my gosh well I think uh, lucky enough for me I think I was too young to really understand the the gravitas of the of the film um I was I had just turned 18 I turned 18 like six days before the audition I just made it um and I just revealed my age oops but (laughs) but I just made it uh, (laughs) in time to audition for it and um I was so eager at the time and dance, I mean, dance as an art is just like, you're so disciplined anyway. So it, I think that that set me up for set life for sure. Like you're really trained as a dancer to be a professional and take direction and take notes on the fly, work quickly and um, really consistently. So I think that that definitely helped uh, all my work actually. Um, Cause now looking back at it, I'm like, Oh, that was, that was a pretty big, pretty big film. I was just enjoying all of it the whole time. So very fun. Very cool. And that led to other things, right? Like uh, one show, uh, me and my daughter Serenity loved to watch. And we like binged it a couple times. So victorious. You were in oh, that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was super fun. That was back. <laughs> it's funny. It was before Ariana, like really, really started singing. But that was like all she was doing on set. I remember like in between every take, she was just like singing. I'm like, dang, she sounds good. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> I'm like, she's, really good. she's going to go places someday. Maybe no, yeah. I was like, Man, she could really make it as a singer or something. Um, yeah, no, it was really <laughs> awesome. Everyone on that set was super cool. And um, I remember the the green room specifically on that show was like legendary at least amongst the dancers. Like if you had dance on a Nickelodeon show, you had a picture in the green room. Um, so that was a pretty cool, <laughs> cool episode to be a part of. Um, one thing that uh, probably a lot of people know you from uh, around Christmas time, people like to watch Christmas episodes and stuff. The Christmas episode of Will and Grace. How cool is that? Yeah. That was oh, a big was part. Amazing. Oh, it was, been, it was amazing. Actually, that was my first, um, that was my first thing that actually made it to television as an actor. Cause I had done like some pilots and, and things and um, stuff that never really saw the light of day. And that was my first actual like acting credit. And it was a multicam with Megan Mullally. Uh, so very, very mm-hmm. intimidating. And awesome. She's so cool, by the way, there was this, I was so, it was such a fun moment. We, um, uh, and at that time I was going by my, my born name, Megan. So we bonded over having the same, the same name. And, um, there was a bunch of other like very young kids on set and I was kind of like 
you know, taking responsibility for them. And she, I think she saw it at one point and was like, that girl needs a break. <laughs> and so she pulled me to the side, like <laughs> have like a little one-on-one. -on -one. I don't, she probably doesn't remember it, has no recollection of it, but it felt so special to just like have that uh, intentional time of like, tell me about yourself. Like, I want to know about you, whatever. And she was saying that she could tell that I had some sort of musical experience because of my comedy, which I was like, oh, my God, Megan Mullally just complimented your comedy skills. You could die tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, that was really cool. And her husband was there. I'm a big fan. He's awesome. Everyone on that show was really, really awesome. But it was cool. Megan was who I worked with the, the most and most close, closely, her and Sean. So both of them were so lovely and so welcoming. And um like really nurturing and um uh leslie jordan as well which was that was really sad yeah last, this yeah past, uh year yeah. but he was a hoot man he was so lovely and genuine and went out of it like he gave me his phone number i was like you don't know me what? Oh, wow. he was so trusting <laughs> and kind and like when the episode aired like texted me and was uh, he was so so Aww. sweet and amazing and the universe we were on universal lot for that show i remember walking out for the day with him and we were like talking and um the tram came by and he has he's has fans obviously and he went up to the tram and was like doing his thing and like his southern <laughs> southern handsome man thing it was so cute and sweet and awesome to see um yeah that was a really really big deal for me that show um it was awesome. Yeah, his kindness always comes through no matter what he does. You can always just tell he was a just amazing the person. Purest, the purest heart ever. It was it, it was amazing. I was really fortunate to get to to work with him. Um everyone on that show super fortunate. Yeah, they all seem great. I uh, love that show. Uh, well, Rewatching it again today, uh, I was uh, focused on, more on you than normally watching the show. And I, I noticed that moment uh, when uh, M Megan was, like started to break and you were trying not to break and almost breaking. And it was very funny. What was that like just being on that set? Because they showed the bloopers after the episode of everybody cracking up the whole time having fun. Oh, my gosh. It was so funny. <laughs> I mean, they're hilarious. And then you're coming in as guest cast. So literally in my head the whole time, I was like, you do not get to mess up. That is their, <laughs> they get to mess up. You don't. So I'm like constantly in my head, like, don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare crack, don't you dare. Um, but they, everyone was super nice about it. I It was great. And James, I mean, James Burroughs, holy crap, I almost forgot. Like he directed that episode. He's a legend as well. It was just, just crazy, the talent. But everyone was so funny. And then they would improvise stuff sometimes. I'm like, gosh, dang it funny and again in my head like don't you dare don't you dare don't you dare crack um, yeah really hard to keep a straight face next to <laughs> next That's to great. those people <laughs> yeah the irish accent was difficult that was i I'm, I'm selling myself out a little bit i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you the truth i learned that accent the night before um the casting director julie ashton oh, wow. who is amazing thank you uh julie for that um <laughs> Hi, I have an amazing dialect coach, Jameson. Hello. Um, and I called, I got the audition the night before and uh, called her and literally figured it out overnight and then auditioned the next day. Mm -hmm. And then they liked my accent wow. so much that they were like, will you record the, the little brother lines so that we can send it to the little kids <laughs> to practice to? Aww. And then unbeknownst to them, I'm on the phone with my dialect coach. Like, hey, how do I say these little brother lines? And then um, sending them. So I'm, I was learning on the fly that whole time. But it is something actually that taught me something fun about myself. I think dialects, uh, I really enjoy doing dialects. They come uh, fairly quick, some at least. So that was really exciting. But then they changed the first, like we went to shoot. We had rehearsed all week with this script. And then we went on shoot day and they added Thing, amazing they added like a bunch of new lines for me as we were walking oh. out to film and i was like oh my god oh my goodness what if i mess up the accent i wasn't worried about memorizing i'm like the <laughs> accent so i literally ran to the bathroom and i'm on the phone with jameson in the bathroom like i just need to make sure i'm doing these right and she quick kind of coached me and made sure i had it all right and then went out uh, anyway <laughs>
That's funny. That that was it was good. The whole episode's good. It's it's one you like like to watch over and over again. I know I've probably seen that more than a few times because you know different Christmas oh, episodes. Amazing. I like Christmas TV movies stuff like that. So that was really cool yeah, to yeah. connect that you were in that also. So uh, you know. helping the kid without the leg that was cute. Different funny things. All right. Uh, now, so that was your first network appearance, right? Uh, television yeah. that well, my aired, first like you said. Yeah. Yep. As an actor. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, dancing, like, bit, America's Got dance. Talent and stuff. Yeah, and I did, yeah. like, um, Switched at Birth uh, as a dancer. So, some other network network TV as a dancer, but first as an actor credit, mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. So, had, uh, tell me about your life between then and then booking Quantum Leap, and then we'll get to Quantum Leap after that. Whew. Oh, man. <laughs> a lot of I mean, a lot of stuff happened. I Yeah, a lot of stuff. Not to get too down in the dumps, but I, I did suffer a pretty bad injury, um, dancing Ooh. for dancing. So I was out for about a year and a half, actually, um, figuring that out. I had to get a surgery and all that, but it did provide a perfect opportunity for me to switch over into acting more full time instead of just doing a little bit here and there of both. So, um, that was really when that switch happened completely. Um, yeah, what else? There's a there's a lot that's happened. I did a couple other like co-star things. Um and then I had my first, you know, the classic. I it happened to me during COVID. I actually worked, I was really fortunate. I worked quite a bit during COVID, luckily. Um, mm. but I did have my first thing like that I shot and didn't air, like my like my part got cut out. That was a fun experience, wow. as I'm sure everyone knows. <laughs> um, that was on an Apple TV show for all mankind, and my my scenes didn't make. Oh, it. you but you were okay. You got to tell me about that. That's that's one of my favorite shows. So you got to tell me uh, what year you were in. Who you I was were? Because me, I was. Um, I think it was season three or four. Maybe it was four. It's 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 aired now, so I can I can say the comp. It was when they like okay. Helios first became a place and i worked in helios so um oh wow actor. yeah so i i worked at the desk i was a small little little part but i was um i had a couple scenes with uh or maybe one scene i don't remember it was a little, a little um with i think his character's name's danny actor is casey who also really okay. everyone yeah. on that show was lovely too i've been really lucky man i haven't really run into any mm. unfortunate people that is uh, awesome. out here yet great Chantel was amazing she was super welcoming really kind. very cool where's that filmed we filmed in Los Angeles I think that one was we filmed at Sony I if I remember correctly yeah very cool so you were totally cut out not even a frame left in there no nothing nothing left oh <laughs> but that's a great experience to be on it at least right Oh, it was awesome. It was all about uh, the entire experience actually as a whole, even the being cut out of it, I think was a very crucial experience for me to have. Uh, it was because it was the first time it had ever happened to me. So it was a, it was great learning all around. Great set experience and great life experience of you got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not personal. When did you find out? Were you, were, when, I found when did out you find out? Were you at home watching it? I was. I found out, but, but you know what? I think, I don't know if casting knew until like the air date, like they, I think they knew, found out like when I was finding out, cause then like, all, like right as the episode, like the release day of the episode, cause it releases on Apple TV, casting emailed my reps and was like, Hey, we just want to let you know. And, and meanwhile, I'm at home. I'm like, I already know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched it. Already popped your popcorn, ready to watch. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 But I'm, I'm sure it happens all the time to so many people. So much. Yeah. So much. I guess. I guess. Now I hear about it all the time. <laughs> mm. You never know. Expanded episodes on Blu ray one day or something like that. You never know. Oh, that I'm happens. holding out. Well, not even um, that. I'm, I was actually kind of pleased. I'm like, actually, you know what? This will leave space potentially to exist in a, in a, maybe I would get to be an astronaut later. <laughs> later. In yeah, a there different you go. Space. Yeah. You, they can use you again. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, my, uh, the, the other host of quantum leap podcast is going to freak out because me and him always text after each episode of for all mankind. So he'll get a kick oh, out of yeah. that. Um, oh, it's good, man. I love that. Show. Uh, and, uh, so, so tell me about, uh, getting quantum leap. That's gotta be exciting. Mm. NBC, another NBC network show. Oh yeah. How did that Oh, happen? that was fun. It was, well, I got the audition and, um, and I, and you asked earlier kind of about my my space before i think yeah so much i mean without going in depth to like every experience i just learned a crap ton a lot um and a lot of that did kind of lead me to this place as an actor where uh now when i audition it's less uh, i think when i first started it was all about kind of like doing it right or doing what you think somebody wants kind of thing. And now I'm at this place in my work where it's just all about serving the story. Um, and a lot of that, I, I work with a coach, Victor, who, who just like emphasizes that, you know what I mean? Like our job is just to create the truth of the, the character at all times. And so for this audition, I was just like, uh, I just really dove <laughs> dove in. I hired my amazing dialect coach again. Cause I was like, I don't know what a Puritan sounds like. What does what what she sound yeah. like? So we worked for <laughs> days on um, on like uh, the speech and, you know, people don't really know what people back then sounded like. So it's really just kind of a guess, an educated guess. So we kind of got mm -hmm. to craft her voice from scratch, which was really fun. And then I went full out because I have a very modern hairstyle. And I was like, this girl did not exist mm -hmm. in the 1800s. We got to mm -hmm. fix that, mm -hmm. hide it. So I ordered a I ordered a full on Puritan outfit from Amazon. Oh wow! Uh, and I oh cool. They that. have everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had the bonnet. It was very cheap. I didn't like go crazy, but I was like, I need a bonnet because I'm mm. not gonna believe my tape looking at my shaved head doing Puritan speech. It's not believable. Um, and then the the accent work, and then of course you know worked with my my coach for the for the acting thing, and and then booked it and booked it off the tape, which was really fun really nice <laughs> booking it off the self tape that's nice uh so once you found out you had the part what what was your experience like did you go in for like fittings and then uh meeting the other producers and actors and stuff oh yeah so fitting fittings happened first um and that was really fun because it's all those old timey uh all that old timey wardrobe and it's like it i mean i don't know where they're getting it, but it felt really authentic which was really cool um, like the actual materials and things and like it I, it looked worn like it looked like it had lived through history so it was really cool um going through that process and then um then we started working then we started filming and that I think I think we shot I think the whole episode took nine days if I remember correctly and I was there for like seven or or something so I really got the time to know the rest of the cast and make friends it was it was honestly one of the most rare experience that I've had as a guest cast where everyone really bonded in a really unique way. Um, like it, it felt as though we had shot a movie, like been on set for like a couple months together, which was very cool. Even the director, Avi was kind of saying, he's like, this really, we got to get back together, all of us. Um, so it was very, very <laughs> fun getting to know it. And we had a really big, I mean, the, the episode has a really big guest cast, um, which, mm -hmm in general right now is pretty rare but especially coming f out of covid the guest casts were quite slim because it was way more expensive to make an episode of television during covid so having a show that was like nah screw it we need everybody <laughs> like we need this many people and we're gonna hire this many people was very special and felt like a very uh, big blessing felt really lucky um, to be a part of a part of a a show like that, that really that like you wa were on set and you felt like the show itself. I don't even know who the show is, right? But like the show itself valued <laughs> its uh, its makers, its its people. Um, that that's how I felt. It felt really really cool to be to be valued like that as an artist. And um, I think it, I think it showed because everyone on there was uh, amazing, super kind. Everyone was like great attitudes everyone worked really hard uh seemed like happy to be there <laughs> you know what i mean um so it was cool to see that that payoff i think on 
on NBC's part, on Quantum Leap's part, on the showrunners and producers. It was great. Yeah, that doesn't always happen. So that sounds like a lucky experience, a good, good experience. Yeah, it felt very rare. Very cool. Very cool. So that was filmed uh, on the Universal backlot, like the Western set, right? Well, it was. We filmed in two two spots. There was the Western set was actually in um, Santa Clarita somewhere. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because we had the fake rain, so they had the um, yeah uh, that that whole set there, which was so cool. That was my first time uh, shooting something where it rained on purpose, and that was very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh what 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 are what's that like what are the details of that like did you, uh, each like character have uh multiple outfits in case they had to dry off and go again with the rain or was it like a one take thing it was it well for us okay so they they shot it at two directions and there's the three of us girls like the the mean girl we called ourselves the mean girls of uh whatever year yeah that was. perfect yeah uh, the original yeah, like, Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we're the, yeah, Mean Girls of the 1892. Um, so they shot at two directions. So on our coverage, we only needed one take. So um, oh, cool. uh, the, other side, the other side needed two. And it wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. I think there was like a technical, like <laughs> there was wind or something that was like blowing the rain. I, don't, I could be messing this up. But there was something that happened where like basically the rain didn't work. Um, but our side went perfectly, so we did it one and done. Uh, and then they just had a bunch of like standing heaters everywhere, and um, wardrobe and makeup were all in there with like towels and things, trying to get us all dry for when they had to do another take. And then Ray, God bless him, got us foot heaters for our boots, um, which was Aww. so kind and amazing. Yeah, he was mm -hmm. like, talk about series leads, like taking care of everybody. Ray was freaking awesome, man. Um, but the rain contraption was cool. It looked like a giant, you know, those sprinklers that like spin on the farm. It was that, but like on, like on a crane. And so it was just oh, this wow. big like tower thing like over you and it would spin um, and make those big. And then for film, they have to make the rain like kind of thicker, like bigger water drops. So you can actually see it. Yeah. Uh, it was so, it so shows cool. Up, it was yeah. cold. Yeah. It was for really? some reason, I don't remember, it was in May, I'm pretty sure, when we shot that. And it was pretty chilly, actually, in Santa Clarita that day. Like, it was cold just being there in general, let alone being wet. But we were, and I remember Avi, too, like, coming over to us before the rain happened, like, almost apologetic. Like, oh, I'm, you know, <laughs> we're going to try to get this done as fast as we can. But everyone was so excited. <laughs> and so he's like, okay. And we all had a really, really great time doing it. I'm like, what is that for a job? That's amazing for a job. <laughs> How can I yeah, possibly be upset? Good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was so, so fun. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, being like a period piece and in costume and, uh, of course, wearing a wig and stuff like that, uh, you, you could always come back to Quantum Leap again as a different character and probably no one would recognize you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wish. I'd love to. The Quantum, I, would, I would come to the Quantum Leap set every day. I was crying leaving, <laughs> but like crying happy tears, but I was literally like pulling off the lot after we wrapped and I was just like sobbing. I was like, God, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where's the other place you filmed then? That, that was on the universal back lot. Yeah. So we did. So okay. the inside cool. of the church, it was a, was a soundstage it was built. Um, yeah, and the courthouse. It's funny they reused the the church and the courthouse are the same structure, just decorated differently, um, and shot on different different ways, which was also cool to see. Movie magic. That was Teen Beach movie too. I remember being shocked. We learned we yeah. like filmed all the beach scenes and we run into Big Mamas, but Big Mamas is like hundred miles away, so <laughs> at a different soundstage. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, well, it makes sense because I'm sure there wasn't too many people building uh, buildings back in the, in the old uh, days like that. So it's probably the same <laughs> yeah, crew yeah. that built the church and the courthouse. So it makes sense. Yeah. Or they just yeah. turn the courthouse into a church on Sundays or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 
what were those interior shoot days like? Uh, Cause a lot of people, a lot of people in, in a small room and then you all had to be there. I'm sure a long time. What, oh, what yeah. how long did that take? We were, I think we did, Ooh, I'm going to, do I remember? I think we did two or three days at the Santa Clarita location. And then the rest of the shoot, like three or four days at, at universal. Um, mm. Yeah. Again, super awesome. There was never boring. It was, it was amazing. It was, yeah, super fun. We also got to work with live animals, which was cool. I've never done that before. They went full out. Mm -hmm. They had goats. (laughs) There was a trained cat. That trained cat was cool to watch. That that cat was trained. Wow. Yeah. It was amazing. (laughs) It was so professional. It was crazy. Yeah, it was like let out awesome. thing, and it did its its like work. And I was like, "Wow, that's cool. Never seen that. That was awesome." The chickens were hilarious because they always like went in the wrong place. Um, actually, the, <laughs> yeah, you can't the, really direct yeah, chickens. Yeah, but some of the handlers are in disguise in the episode. So, like next oh, to us, that makes sense. three when we're like by this well, like two of the people next to us were animal handlers, like in little bonnets and dresses and stuff to take care of the chickens in case they didn't do their thing. Right. <laughs> Aw, that's so cool. Yeah. 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 It, se- it seems yeah. like a, it but seems like a fun time. It was a, it was a really good episode. Really good episode. Are you excited to watch it when it comes out? Oh, oh I'm so excited. And Margarita, that was really, we only got one day with, um, with her on set because the writer strike literally happened mid shoot. Um, but Margarita who wrote the episode was super awesome. And like, super on it she came in and like was looking at all of us and like she did her research she's like we need this hairstyle because in this era you like can't have that this hair so like they were like tucking ruby's hair ruby's hair is like long and gorgeous and like tucking it behind um it, she was really really cool so i was i was bummed that we only got one day um to work together but um still really cool to to have that experience as well but i i loved the episode so i thought she she crushed it yeah uh, yeah, we're speaking to her as well, so that'll be fun. Oh yeah, um, so, yeah, she's cool. So we're excited for that. This was uh, filmed right before, right, like you said, wh- when the the writer strike started, and right before the actors strike started. So was mm-hmm. there like a weird, uh, like feeling amongst everyone, like an impending impending strike coming, like we had to get this done, or just like oh, a, yeah. like a weird feeling in the air? Can you describe that right before the strikes happened? Yeah. I mean, it was, it, we had all three things happening because that actually was still during COVID as well, technically. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the mask things and everything were still in place. So, like, we had an actor on our set um, test positive and have to, like, not come to work for a couple of days. Still, it was still happening. Mm. Masks and everything. So, it was like yeah. dealing with COVID still. And then the writer strike was coming. It was just mm-hmm. like waiting for that, waiting for that buzz. And we were trying to get, um, because with no writers, you can't change things, obviously. Like, you can't uh, change lines or things. So they were, like, trying to really utilize the crap out of Margarita while she was there. Like, um, I know that there was a certain line in our – I don't know which one made it in, but we did a couple different versions of when we first, like, opened with Ray. And we have, like, the flower. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she was there doing that. And then after she left, like, all that – and it had to stop. So we just had to do what was already – was already written and cleared and um so there was definitely like a an antsiness to it i don't know if anyone at that point thought that the actors would act i think i think we were all hopeful that maybe the the one strike would be enough (laughs) to to make it all stop yeah so i don't think i expected it to to go the the way that it that it did it's all really necessary but of course i mean of course it's a bummer everyone wants to work we all were really excited to be working and and bummed to to not be obviously but uh really grateful to the union for fighting that good fight yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta earn a living you can't you can't do this i mean it's fun but you gotta pay your bills too (laughs) yeah especially in los angeles my god i just watched your short film uh a little alone time and i was really touched by it i was surprised how like in 15 minutes or so you can really get into characters and have all this emotion i i think you were so good in that Along oh, with yeah, uh, you. your co-star, and uh, yeah. just can you tell me about that experience? When was that filmed? Was that during COVID? Uh, what, oh, just yeah. what the what's what was the whole experience? Yeah, that was. I mean, that's a that's a crazy one because we literally it was only a crew of five of us, 
and it was just uh, me and the guy in it with me, Mark, my partner, and um, mm -hmm. our friends Mackenzie and Philip, and J Mo with his camera, and that was it. And we just did everything. It was kind of, um, I guess, us trying to express how COVID being trapped in our homes was kind of making all of us feel. Um, and just, <clears throat> yeah, it was actually my, my very first thing I've ever made. I've only ever been in front of the camera before. Um, so that also felt very special and vulnerable writing. And, um, we, we all kind of created the story together and shot it in our friend's house. And that, that was it. Uh, really, uh, really small crew, just kind of feeling the urge to be creative during uh, an unfortunate time of life. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, I, I, I didn't get that from the movie when I was watching uh, uh, about the isolation inside and the COVID, but it makes sense now. I was, I was, I, I was watching more as like uh, loss and grief and dealing with that. So it works on many levels, but uh the whole stepping outside and you can't step outside. Yeah. I think it's, it's kind of been one of the cool things about the film is everyone's response. Um, they seem to be touched by it in different ways. Um, some is the grief and loss and some is the, I mean, the, the mental health aspect that's so clear. If you, if you watch the film, I won't necessarily spoil anything, but um, I mean, there's clearly a, a message in there about that. And um making that decision to 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 stay um despite the tough things um so it's it's actually been a really cool experience seeing that something i mean we had zero dollars that is a zero budget for a short film it was, it was mm -hmm. so much evidence to me of like you have no excuse <laughs> but to create something um yeah yeah, yeah. and it, it uh, yeah, it's, that it's being really zero budget it's amazing yeah, zero dollars, nothing. We made the own, like literally the, the blood, mm -hmm. the like, um, the gunshot is literally Mackenzie, uh, the one of the other producers on it is like over in the corner. We got from Home Depot like a giant syringe and like a tube, like just taped it, and it's all makeshift. Like we just, just did it all ourselves. We got like duct tape hanger hanging up certain lights in certain places. Like if you saw the actual mm -hmm. set, it was just so scrapped yeah. together. Um, but we just we just had to make something, so that that was the fruition of that. But it's been really cool actually hearing that it did have because we didn't make it for that purpose necessarily. Um, we made it because we felt so like we needed to make something. We needed to make this is how we were feeling, and um, so it's been cool to get that response. So thank you for for watching that. We got into some cute little festivals. That's been fun. Um, first time in the festival circuit with something that I made, which was a cool experience. Yeah, I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it yet. I'll, I'll link it down below. Uh, I saw some of the behind the scenes on your Instagram. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it definitely uh, showed your talent, your acting talent, I, I believe. It was really, well, really touching so much. all around. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate so that. You can do anything. You can dance. You can act. <laughs> it's great. You can. Oh, uh, yeah, you're even okay, edit. You even edited part of it, right? <laughs> well, we okay. Philip did the Sorry. editing. Director, no, no, no. But I like. We were all there. I reacted like that only because oh, okay. editing is hard. Editing is so hard. Um, I had no idea before very. making something <laughs> on your own. I'm like, oh yeah. my god, how do people do this? <laughs> so much. So many hours and hours, and you have no choice because you have to watch everything. You have to watch all the footage. And then, oh, this takes sound doesn't work. Do we do ADR? Do we whatever? Sound is also really hard. All of that's hard. So that it was definitely a team effort. But uh, F Philip spent the most hours in front of that computer, and Mark Mark scored it. The actor, the actor uh, in it with me. Wow. Like, just learned yeah, how wow. to do it on his computer and did that. And then a friend of ours, Domino, let us mm -hmm. use some of his songs, which was really, really lovely of him. We brought that couch to the beach, mm -hmm. just carried it ourselves. I wondered about that <laughs> <laughs> after I saw it. I was like, wow, that was a day probably getting a couch on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. 3 a.m. We loaded it up. JMO has a truck. We put it in the truck and brought it to the beach. Very cold. <laughs> um, but yeah, really fun. And the all the mount, um, not mountain. It's not a mountain. What is that? Uh, that is kind of a mountain. The rock. Cliff. The big rock. 
Yes, cliff. the cliff. Rock, yeah. You. Um, yes. yes. Um, J-Mo mm-hmm. was literally just hooked up to like a harness with his camera. Just super gorilla style. Oh, wow. um, but all of it was practical. We didn't have any special effects budget. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, it no all just worked well. beautifully. I hope uh, I hope you all get together and do more. Oh, thank you. We people. do actually. We have um, we have another short film. We've already made it, uh, but we just it just got in the hands of a VFX artist and then score and coloring. But that one's called Yoke, hoping to release early next year, which would be really fun. Um, yeah, I was laughing. You said yeah, I can do the you can do anything part. My <laughs> I just booked a a film and um I don't play guitar. I pretend to play guitar. I play like Taylor Swift on guitar, which if anyone plays guitar knows that Taylor Swift songs are just like four chords over and over again. That's the extent of my mm-hmm. guitar playing, mm-hmm. but I did play it for the audition <laughs> um, and uh booked it. And my character plays a banjo and the director is asking me, but I was like, I think he thinks I play guitar completely. <laughs> and I was like, I, I'm a beginner. And he was like, well, do you want your character to play guitar or the banjo, how it's written in the script? And I was like, I get banjo, banjo. If it's written, either way, I'm going to be learning a new <laughs> instrument. So here we go. I had my first banjo literally right before I came on with you. I had my first banjo lesson. So we'll see if I can pull oh, it wow. off. We'll see. Uh, Steve Martin is great on the banjo. He, he he has a lot of banjo albums out. Steve Martin. Steve yeah. Martin's good. Okay. Loves the banjo. <laughs> yeah. Steve Martin. He's another one of them. Um, yeah. Uh, was amazing. there any was there any special things you had to learn uh, for besides uh, the uh, from the dialect coach for uh, Quantum Leap episode? Was there anything like different special? Like, do you walk different back then? Do you do you carry yourself different? Mm. You know. Yeah. Did people look um, down more? You know, what went into that? <laughs> For me, <laughs> and this actually came a lot from working with my dialect coach. A lot of it is just about uh, posture, a posture in your mouth, like when you're talking and also just posture in general as a lady. And that time, it's also uh, you kind of don't really have that much of a, an option because your clothes are so restrictive that you really can't slouch or anything like that. Um but walking, yeah, the po- the posture was a big thing for me when I was working on that character, figuring out how you would carry yourself. And especially as like a young, a young woman, a young unmarried woman at that time, it was like really shameful to be too promiscuous. You know what I mean? And promiscuous was even like, that was something that made me laugh. Margarita, when she came in that day, like, so the girls who had hair, like their hair was kind of like out and it looked very cute. And she's like, too, too promiscuous. Um, <laughs> so like those kinds of mannerisms that we have in modern day that would have back then maybe seemed that way. Um, ankles, none. Right. So like even walking, even though the dress were like tripping over them, we're like, we can't lift them that like quite so high. Cause we can't show those ankles. So definitely. a lot. Yeah, that'd be scandalous. Was, I, yeah. Yeah. That was my second though. And both on universal hilarious universal likes to put me in the 1800s. Cause that was also for willing. <laughs> Um, yeah yeah had a similar That's outfit funny. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of period pieces there so yes, sci-fi yes. comedy period pieces yeah so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh finally i just wanted to ask you about your general takeaway from uh filming quantum leap and like what you'll carry with you uh just from being on that show and the whole time you spent on the set mm. oh my gosh so much from this one i I think for, I might say two things. One that I learned uh, from the people and one I think a lesson that I learned internally was how much, truly how much power you have as the actor to affect your environment. And that was a big, a big thing I learned on that set because, um, um, uh, when I was talking to my coach, he has me do this exercise when I'm feeling nervous. Cause this was, this was a, a bigger role for me. It was on network TV. It was my first, um, top of show guest star, which in for, for an actor is really cool. Um, so I was like, Oh my gosh, I was feeling kind of nervous. And he has me do this exercise that, um, oh, I wish I knew his name. It's some famous wrestler. 
does, and they write basically like everything that could go wrong in a journal. Have you heard about this? Mm, okay. I know, I know a lot of famous wrestlers, but I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure. I I forget their name, but it's uh, it's from from them. They they write down like what they're afraid of. Essentially, uh, they journal it out, and then they don't leave it there because then you're just dwelling on all the things you're afraid of. But then what they do is the second part of the exercise is you write uh, yourself solving that problem. Like you know, I'm afraid of this, but I'm gonna be okay because um, you know because I prepared whatever it is like those things and. I did that every day when I got to set, I got there a little early and like took some time in my wardrobe and like whatever, and did my, um, that first before I kind of jumped into my character work and it, I felt like a freaking magician a little bit, like, because some of the things that I wrote down that I feared the solve that I wrote, like almost happened verbatim. It's crazy. It's crazy. So just having that, um, that mindset of really trying to like, especially the day that it rained is where this really solidified for me. Cause it would have been so easy to be a cranky actor that day. And it was so clear in how I was being treated by everybody because everyone was worried that we were going to be cranky actors that day. Wardrobe was worried. You know what I mean? Like they had to tell everyone was trying to like be mm. really comforting. And I think I just uh, made the choice in my trail. I was like, I am so happy to be here today no matter what, I'm so happy to be here today and I'm going to be cold and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be fine because I'll warm up, you know, all those things. And it ended up going exactly like that. And what was really cool is that, and I'm not saying by any means that it was me who started, everyone on set had that attitude, but it was really cool. It just kind of felt like everyone then was of the same mindset. Everyone was down for it. Everyone was having a great time. And um, then like all the people, you know, who were nervous about dealing with cranky actors are like, oh, these guys are OK. Everyone's having fun. We're good. We're good. And it uh, to me was just so much proof in how how much you can um, influence and how much you what, what am I trying to like? How much you can actually take some power back in your environment. So you're not so much the effect of everything, but you can be causative. And that was a big thing for me to learn as an actor, um, just because those are the things I want to be doing. And I want to have more responsibility. Like, I want to be the series lead too, man. And I'm like watching. And then you get to watch people like Ray, who are amazing series leads. They work really hard. Like, they don't sacrifice themselves, right? They're doing amazing work. But at the same time, they are taking, taking care of everybody taking care of their people he saw our feet were cold and we're like hey because he can speak up that way like can we get some feet warmer something super small checking in on everybody being kind to everybody super welcoming you know what i mean i'm like those you can really influence the environment around you even as as a small guest person so that was the biggest thing i took that was a long speech i really went in there sorry um but that was the biggest thing i think i learned i really like that on that um which I really, really like that. I think anybody could apply that way of thinking to their life because to, oh, we all have anxiety. If we don't, I, there might be something wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good way because it's mostly like fear of the unknown and what you do if that would happen. And most of the time, those things never happen. But yeah. you going in with a game plan like that, I'm wow, that's I, I love when that. It was so much proof to me of like um, you kind of attract – like-minded humans because I think in a previous previous version of myself it was really easy to when I was very young like Teen Beach for instance um everyone was super awesome on that set too but like the that era of my life I worked a lot of dance jobs and there was a lot of um older generation that always seemed like very bitter to be working like they just would always find something to complain about when being on set and it's really easy to because you want to be, a, you know, you want to feel like you belong to kind of like fall in, slip into that um, game as well. And I kind of realized that I hate that, that like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> this is what I want to do all the time. And so making that decision, and I think it, I, I do think a little bit that that has attributed so far as to why I haven't really worked with many assholes. I haven't worked with many, can I swear? Sorry. <laughs> I haven't worked with many rude people. Yeah. Like almost all of the people, all the people that I've worked with have been very awesome. Um, And I, and I, and I think that that, that mindset shift mattered 
So that was a big, that was like the, the cherry on top of it, of like, it absolutely does. Um, and not even saying you can't be like set. Like I had a day on set where I wasn't really like feeling very good. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you have to have like a great attitude all the time, like be super happy, go lucky, but it is just like the way you approach people and the gratitude can always still exist, even in those moments of discomfort. Um, and it just really change, changes everything. So it was really cool to see that actually like play out. I love it. All right. So it was a good time on Quantum Leap. Oh, the best time. The best time. I would do it over and over again. It was so fun. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see you again on the show. You never know. They've done it before, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, oh, wow. I think, I think you did okay. great in the episode. And uh, oh, thank now you. Uh, speaking with you. I'm so and, uh, I can't, seen it. I can't not watch. <laughs> it's it's good. It's really good. It's really good. Uh, I Every time I watch it from now on, I'm going to think uh, you as one of the mean girls. And like, we always wear black on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh i hope you get those those That's two girls awesome. too. i mean everyone too madeline shelby ruby they were all like so nice so nice okay well jet wilder thank you so much for being on the quantum leap podcast i really appreciate it thank you so much for having me it was so lovely being here <laughs>